<clears throat> All right, it's one with Jim keyboard. I'm testing out my camera. I have an overhead one, then a side one right here. I'm gonna do a simple design. If I can get my airbrushes to work, cause they're kind of dirty. I haven't had time to clean the all the airbrushes. I only have a few ones that are the popular color ones. So we're gonna go with pink, cause that's my main color I've been using. Gotta shake it up since. That's how it splits when it settles real bad. <clears throat> Give it a little shaky shake. Shake it so you can bake it. And I mean literally, because when you're done airbrushing a t-shirt, you're supposed to heat set it for about 30 seconds at 320. <clears throat> so it binds the paint into the fabric that doesn't come off when washing. Right now I'm just gonna do a simple sphere and do a simple strip design that's basically known as the bread and butter of the airbrush world. <clears throat> Something you can get at the fairs for like 10 bucks depending the area you're in. Usually I start with the light circle. This will get me centered. And you gotta make sure it's properly in the middle in all angles. So I have all that sketched out. I'm gonna do a flourish on the bottom and on the top. And it's gonna be my guideline for the name. Once I have the rest of the name, I'm gonna come back heavy on the flourishes and blend it out, add some Starburst. <clears throat> so it's gonna pop more. And what I usually like to do is uh, to sketch out the name with the color that, I, color that I'm painting the whole thing with. Cause sometimes accidents happen. You get names that you're not used to spelling and airbrushing t-shirts it's basically a spelling bee on steroids because they will yell at you for not spelling it right and they're paying you so they kind of get that chance so let's go with what's a good name So I have my name that's centered. Now I can actually come back and bolden up the uh, flourishes I added and add my starburst if I want to. But let's do the name first. If you do the drop shadow right, or the sketch, you can literally just offset the black lining to the side, and you have an automatic drop shadow, like you see here and there. You have to come back and fix the little areas. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, because then you once you start doing the black lettering, you want to add more flair to it. It turns into a habit, so it kind of goes out the window sometimes, but sometimes it works. <clears throat> and make sure when you're doing a lettering game, try to keep the spacing consistent. 
<laughs> the strokes consistent as close as you can. This is handmade. And remember, anything that goes down gets thickened up, and it goes up, uh, goes thin, up, down, and so forth. So enough good gets me. coming on the side burying the pink so it's more prominent see the difference laying down the paint hard and here where it looks wishy-washy right now I'm just gonna go from the bottom to the top and blend it out Do a little starburst right here. And one right here. You can either leave the design as is, it looks pretty solid. Sometimes if you're in a hurry, you do it like that and go to the next one because sometimes shirts will pile up on you. But if you have time, you can come back with the highlights and brighten it up. And the thing for the highlights that make it pop is to have a nice, sharp, tight, white highlight. I used to make big old blobs when I was learning how to airbrush and it made everything look uh, muddy. But the tighter it is, the better the effect comes out. See now it looks like it's popping out, rounded off, especially with the little uh, drop shadow. And then wherever you want, if you want to put a little starburst. For that extra twinkle, you can and there we go. <laughs> 